We see so many things on social media about a day in the life or a morning routine. And those things are awesome. Like those are so fun and encouraging and inspiring. But I think sometimes if we're not careful, we can get into this comparison mode of like, oh no, like my morning time doesn't look like that. Or maybe you're even comparing it to a season that you used to be in where you would spend hours in God's word. And now you are getting ready for finals or you have a baby who's waking up at four in the morning or you're in a different routine, a different rhythm and your time in the word looks like 15 minutes here and then maybe five minutes there and you're discouraged because it doesn't look the way you think it's supposed to. And you may even think that God isn't as pleased with you because your time with him looks different. Everybody, my name is Emma Mae McDaniel, and I am so happy to welcome you to the Have You Heard podcast. Friends, we are in Psalm 1, and if you have not heard the first part of this four part series, be sure and go check out last week's episode. But we are in Psalm 1, verse 2 today, talking about delighting in the Word of God. So, faith comes by hearing. Grab your headphones and let's get into the Word. Psalm 1 verse 2. But before we get into all of its goodness, I would love to read all of Psalm 1 with you guys. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither in all that he does he prospers the wicked are not so but are like chaff that the wind drives away therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous for the lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked will perish and like i said we are in verse 2 today which says But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. This, I guys, I cannot emphasize enough how much I love Psalm 1 because, as I said last week, this was the motto in my family's home throughout my high school years. Psalm 1, because it emphasized the importance of your friends, who you choose to hang out with, who you choose to be your core people, and what we're going to be talking about today, the importance of meditating on God's word, the importance of knowing God's word, the importance of living according to God's word. And I love just getting to break this down word by word. And some there are two words in here that I just really was my attention was caught by these words because it says his delight and this his is the guy it says blessed or the guy or girl because that word man means human being so it's the person who does not walk in step with the wicked stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers and we're talking about that same person that is blessed by doing so that same person is blessed by delighting in the law of the lord and i think this is so cool The word delight here is a feeling of extreme pleasure or satisfaction, joy. It's extreme pleasure. I love the message version. The message version says, instead, you thrill to God's word. It is my extreme pleasure. It is my passion. It is my joy. It is my wish to be in the word of God, to know the word of God, to live by the word of God. And I'm very much aware that that you may be listening right now and say, I wish I felt that way. I wish that I opened up God's word and felt intense pleasure and joy. And it was my delight to read his word. But honestly, right now, I am overwhelmed by life situations. And every time I open up the word or go to the Lord in prayer, that's all that covers my mind. Every time I go to the word, I'm just honestly going through the motions and I'm just checking off the box to say that I did it. 
honestly, I'm intimidated by it. I don't know what these words mean. I don't know how to apply it to my life. I don't know how to learn about God through his word. I'm confused by it. Or even, I know sometimes, especially in our culture where we see so many things on social media about a day in the life or a morning routine and those things are awesome like those are so fun and encouraging and inspiring but I think sometimes if we're not careful we can get into this comparison mode of like oh no like my morning time doesn't look like that or maybe you're even comparing it to a season that you used to be in where you would spend hours in God's word and now you are getting ready for finals or you have a baby who's waking up at four in the morning or you're in a different routine, a different rhythm and your time in the word looks like 15 minutes here and then maybe five minutes there and you're discouraged because it doesn't look the way you think it's supposed to and you may even think that God isn't as pleased with you because your time with him looks different. I want you to know that you're not alone. I want you to know that God loves you And I want to speak into all of those things and hopefully bring such encouragement to you. I want you to know that it's okay that this season doesn't look like the last one. That God is jealous for you and he promises that when you draw near to him, he draws near to you. And there is nowhere in scripture that says you have to be in the word X amount of times a day. This word, the next word that I'm going to be honing in on is meditate. And meditate means to reflect deeply. So sometimes I may be spending time in God's word for 15 minutes in the morning, but that doesn't mean that my time with God is only 15 minutes a day. My time with God is all day long, 24-7. As I'm thinking on his word, as I'm talking with him, as I'm with people and as I'm by myself, as I'm serving people, as I'm, in, as I'm in silence with him in the car, or as I'm worshiping him with the music that's on. Friend, I just want to encourage you, it's okay that your season doesn't look a certain way, and do not let the enemy rob the joy and the delight of being in God's word because it simply looks different right now. Praise God that you're able to be in his word. How awesome. If you're in the crew that is confused or intimidated, not not really knowing what these words mean, I think that there's something so beautiful about the fact that we get to constantly be in a pl- state and place of learning. In my book, You Are, that came out last summer, one of the chapters is you are made to wonder. And I think that sometimes we get caught up in our own pride or fear of what other people are thinking that we don't know everything that we should know and therefore we stop trying to learn or we pretend like we know it all when actually we're confused about a lot of things and we want to know a lot of things. I think there's something so incredible about acknowledging that you don't know it all and delighting in learning, being, uh, having a childlike posture of wanting to grow. And that's a lifelong journey. I started making sourdough about a year ago and my aunt Katie, she is like a pro at making sourdough. And I cannot tell you how many voice memos, how many pictures were sent, how many videos, how many text messages were going back and forth as I was just asking questions. And my enjoyment for the process only grew as I continued to learn. So I also want to encourage you, do not let the enemy rob the joy and the passionate pleasure And the delight of being in God's word by feeling like I don't know it all and I'm supposed to. What a beautiful place to be. Because life is going to be really rough for you if you constantly think that you're supposed to know everything. It's a lot more fun when you acknowledge you don't and you embrace the joy of learning. Why do you think I looked up the definition of what these words meant? Because I didn't know. (laughs) Let's learn together. Let's delight in God's word together. If you're in the crew where when you get into the word and you either have this mentality of just checking off the box or you're constantly just thinking of all other things that are going on in your life right now that are overwhelming or just distractions are flooding your time in the word, I want to encourage you to go to the Lord about those things. Ask God to give you a delight for his word. Ask God to deepen your love for his word. If there are things crowding your mind, take them to the Lord. Say, God, these things are on my mind. But don't let them keep you 
from hiding his word in your heart, from choosing to to delight in his word. I pray you're so encouraged. I pray that you just know how much God loves you. This thrill for God's word. The second word that I highlighted was meditating. So this verse, it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. And this word meditate, as I touched on earlier, is to reflect deeply. And it kind of points to the, I'm not just checking this off of a list kind of thing. It's not like, okay, I read the verse of the day, done. It's no, I'm, I'm thinking on it all day. I'm praying about it. Like if, if it's this verse, he delights in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. God, help me to do that. I pray that you would give me a delight for your word. I pray that you would show me who you are through your word. I pray that you would give me direction in my life through your word. I'm going to think on it day and night. He counsels me at night. And I love to, in the message version, instead you thrill to God's word and you chew on scripture day and night. It's like I'm just constantly mulling over it. I'm letting it simmer. I'm thinking on it and then I'm thinking on it again. I just think this is so beautiful. And I pray that it kind of brings ease to the intimidation factor. Like, what if you just honed in on one verse this week? Just one verse and wrote it down. I feel like I say this all the time when I talk about meditating on God's word. But just one verse and you you put it on your mirror, in your car, on your refrigerator. And you're just constantly thinking over it. Letting it transform you by the renewing of your mind. Letting it deepen your relationship with God. Letting it be your response to the lies of the enemy. You thrill to God's word. You chew on scripture day and night. I'm currently reading in Leviticus. And a little while back I was in Leviticus 18. And I thought it was really cool because the Lord is telling his people to obey his word. He's telling them to obey his word because it leads to life. He says life is found through them. He says it will go well with you by keeping my word. I don't just think that's so cool that God cares about our well-being. God cares about our life. He cares about the posture of our heart and, and the posture of our mind. And he wants it to go well for us. And he says, hey, my word is life giving. I want what's best for you. And in me is what's best for you. So delight in my word. Reflect on it deeply and apply it to your life. If we are just checking off reading God's word on a day-to-day basis, then we are allowing ourselves to be so limited to experience all that God has for us to experience, to taste and see how good he is. And I don't want us to continue to limit ourselves, believing the lies of the enemy and getting in our own way. I, when I was thinking about scripture that talks about scripture, I was like, just, there's so much. It's so encouraging, but I want to just share these things with you so that if after the podcast tonight, before you go to bed in the morning, you wanted to just go read through these, they would be great just to think on, to read through. In Psalm 119, it's literally the longest chapter in the whole Bible, so it'd be hard to read just in one morning, but it is so good. And some of the things that it talks about is that the Word of God guides us, the Word of God protects us, the Word of God thrills us. I'm delighting in it. In Psalm 19, I wanted to read this to you. Like half of the Psalm is literally talking about the Word of God. Listen to this The law of the Lord is perfect reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Friends, I cannot tell you the sweetness that I have experienced when I am sitting with the Lord and I pray that he would speak to me and open my eyes to see him as I read his word and the encouragement and intimacy that only grows with him as I'm sitting in his word and I'm either just so in awe of his holiness I'm I'm convicted I'm I'm encouraged I'm I'm brought to my knees as he is so good it really does bring joy it rejoices my heart the commandment of the Lord is pure enlightening the eyes it opens my eyes to see life the way I was designed to see it 
The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired they than gold, even much fine gold. Pray, I encourage us together. Why don't we pray, God, give me a desire for you and your word above all else. And friends, like anything we ask according to his will, it shall be done. And why on earth would us having a deeper love and desire and delight for his word be against his own will? (laughs) It wouldn't. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. In keeping them, there is life. In keeping them, it will go well with you. In keeping them, there is blessing. In keeping them, there is close fellowship that just grows more and more with God. So, so powerful. Second Timothy 3.16 The word of God is profitable for completely equipping you. And I love in Matthew 4 where Jesus says, we don't live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Joshua 1.8 talks about how the word of God being what I live out and being on my lips, it brings success. And I think what's so interesting, like it brings success and prosperity. And that may not always look like the world's definition of success and prosperity, but I tell you it is um, it is the eternal kind of success and prosperity. How how good is our God? In John 17, 17, the word of the Lord is true. Jesus prays in John 17, 17. He says, God sanctify them, Father, sanctify them in your word, in truth, for your word is truth. And that word sanctify means to be made holy. Going back to the reasons that we don't delight in God's word and reasons that we don't reflect on his word deeply. In the face of those reasons, in the face of the lies of the enemy, in the face of our own excuses and our own desires that go against God's heart, I want to encourage you, get in the word anyway. Write it down anyway. Say it out loud anyway. Read it anyway. Spend time in the truth. I want to encourage you to hide it in your heart. And I want to encourage you to be stubborn. Get a little grit. Let's get a little oomph behind our time in the word. Realizing that there is a real enemy who would hate for us to not only spend time in God's word. But actually delight in God's word. And actually meditate on God's word. And actually live according to God's word. So I want to encourage us to get stubborn against the things that keep you from delighting in the word of God. Call them out for what they are and get in the word anyway. Psalm 1 verse 2, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. Delight, their passionate joy, reflecting on it deeply. I love y'all so much. I'll talk to y'all next week.